Welcome, friends, to another Mercy Moment Emory episode. I'm so fired up for the ground we're going to cover together. So I want to encourage you to, to really dial in with me, put down whatever it is that you're working on, because the insight I'm about to share can really save decades of pain, decades of heartache, decades of confusion and frustration. And that is the matter of what captivates your eyes. Because what captivates your eyes, and what fills your eyes, then fills your heart and controls your heart. What fills your eyes is of critical importance. And in a world where there is sensory overload and there is so much, so much contending to fill our eyes and captivate our attention through our eyes, this is a vital necessity to understand. And Jesus, Jesus just lays it all bare for us. And he gives us the clarity we need to navigate the roads of life as life can be tricky and deceptive and uh, things can appear as something that they really aren't. And it's so important to have his insight, his wisdom, and to be following him as the Lord, because if I don't have someone guiding me, I'm going to make a bunch of mistakes and I'm going to probably walk in a direction that will hurt, harm, or destroy me. Just as King Solomon wrote, there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is death. Catch that. Its end is death. It seems right. Have you ever made a decision where things seem so right, but in the end it left you confused? It left you depleted? It left you disoriented and uh, beat down? I know I have. I've made those mistakes, and what he is revealing to me if, that I'm going to unpack in this Emory episode is of eternal importance. And it's something that you will not regret receiving and taking in. And I would even encourage you to grab a notepad because honestly, this lesson can transform the rest of your life and change generations to come of your children. Save them the pain of walking the wrong road. Because like I'm going to say again, what fills my heart also fills, what fills my eyes also fills my heart. And it gains access to control my heart. So what fills my eyes will go to my heart. And what captivates my eyes overflows from my life and out of my mouth. Jesus said out of the wellspring of the heart, the mouth speaks. So I can get a really good indication of what's going on in my heart and what's controlling it what's stirring within it by what's coming out of my mouth. Because that is the indicator and revealer. It reveals me. It reveals any person. Their mouth and their words reveal their heart. But the thing is, what captivates my eyes also captivates my heart. And Jesus made it so plain when he declared, the eye is the lamp of the body. The eye is the lamp of the body. And he also went on to say that if if a whole man's eye is dark, his whole life is dark. Everything is dark. Because the eye is meant to be the lamp of the body, to fill the rest of the body with light. To fill it with, with clarity. King Solomon also reveals this connection between the eyes and the heart through the book of Proverbs. This book is foundational. It's something I've been reading since high school. It's filled my heart. It's interesting what you put in fills your heart. So through your eyes, through reading, through listening, through audio, but the written page, the written word, what what are you filling your heart with, friend? What is it that's captivating you? Solomon called the heart the wellspring of life. So from it flows the matters of life is one translation. Another translation says the wellspring of life, the wellspring. It's, it's the core of who we are. Core of everything we do flows from our heart. And he commanded his son, who he wrote the book of Proverbs, the audience was his son, mentoring his son in the way to avoid the painful paths he had chosen from experience in good and bad. He wrote to his son to above all else, guard your heart. That command (laughs) seems to be neglected in our day and age where we kind of expose ourselves to anything and everything. There really isn't a sensor or or an internal check 
when something crosses the screen, whether it's watching TV, commercial, or watching a movie, and it's a direct attack on our hearts. The things that are impure, that are vile, that are evil, things that are filling our hearts or that overflow from our life. And in our media-driven culture, it's too easy to lackadaisically kind of float through life and not really take a hard look at what is filling my heart, what's really filling the core of who I am, and not really taking an honest, invested mindset towards what I'm letting in my eyes and what I'm letting captivate my eyes because TV and movies are a medium that will are projecting a message and that's filling your heart, friend. It's not just a TV show. It's not just this, that, the other. What I let in my eyes fills my heart. So there's got to be the honest question. Is this pure, lovely, amber, praiseworthy? Is it beneficial? Is it filling my heart with light and life and joy and peace and goodness? I wouldn't describe a majority of TV shows or movies that way. And there's a gauge. I'm not saying to, to get rid of all TV and all of movies. All I'm calling for is a discerning heart that says, I'm not going to subject myself to just anything because my heart's more valuable. I don't want to just let anything contaminate it. So please don't hear me wrong. I know I'm being strong. I'm being direct. But it's in love because Jesus so was so emphatic on this matter. And he, he made this connection when he emphatically warned he warned of this connection of of the heart with adultery jesus authoritatively declared but i tell you so in that day it said do not commit adultery but he took it to the heart level he said but i declare to you that anyone who looks at a woman looks with what your eyes looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Interesting, the eyes connected to the heart. This is a powerful connection to really understand, friend. Really latch on to this. This has been a game changer for me for a number of years, and it's the only way to overcome lust. It's the eyes. What captivates the eyes controls the heart. That's why the plague of pornography is so serious. Pornography is adultery. Jesus taking his words straightforward in the emphatic authority that he spoke said, well, whoever looks at a woman lustfully, the only thing pornography does is stir adultery and lust and then fornication when it's acted upon with another person that you're not married to. So there is so much here and pornography is not just a minor uh, malignant issue that just everyone struggles with. I'm telling you right now that porn will destroy your life, destroy every relationship that's important to you because it takes away any depth, makes superficial, and it makes it makes a heart that is just not not focused. It makes a heart that is totally divided, and a divided anything, divided house, divided heart cannot stand, and it will not succeed in life. You will have no joy, no peace. And the, the issue is what is controlling your eyes? If there's an honest inventory there and then an honest reflection of what needs to go, your life will totally transform. I'm telling you there's freedom from pornography. The whole heart of this message is for you to get free. Free from whatever it's entangling you because it's not just a matter of loss but a matter of envy, of greed. What's filling your heart through your eyes that then results in action and manifests through your hands. But Jesus takes this further. He, he says, anyone who looks lustfully at a woman already committed adultery with her. And he says this, and I'm going to let you sit with this and really take this in and really seek his heart in this. I'm not going to tell you what it means. I'm going to invite you to seek him out in his serious words here. He says, if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away it is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell jesus doesn't take sin lightly jesus doesn't take pornography lightly he doesn't take any form of lust 
for things of the world, material possessions, other people, any form of lust, he doesn't take lightly. And I just want to encourage specifically the church, stop making your sin minor. Stop downplaying it because your sin is affecting your whole being. It's destroying you. The wages of sin is death. The wages of pornography is death of relationship, death of desire, death of enjoyment of sex. The death of everything good comes through sin. Sin leads to death. Sin leads to death. The wages of sin is death and that doesn't change. No matter how you feel about any certain sin, it doesn't change the reality. God in love has revealed his truth. The wages of sin is death. I want to close with the words of Solomon on the matter of this connection between the eyes and the heart. He emphatically warned his son of the adulterous woman, the prostitute, the slut, the one that, that uses her body to control and manipulate a man for some form of gain. He emphatically warned his son, and he knew this well. He had over a thousand women between his harem, so people he could just sleep with, and he had a bunch of wives. This man was not short of sex, but he emphatically, as he's looking through the sober lens of his mistakes, but also God's truth, he wrote, Do not lust in your heart after her, the prostitute's beauty, or let her eyes captivate you. Let her captivate you with her eyes. I'm going to read that again. King Solomon wrote emphatically, Do not lust in your heart after her beauty. Starts with the eyes. Don't lust in your heart after her beauty. How? Through your eyes, through your gaze, through your fixation. Or let her captivate you with her eyes. It's interesting. Our eyes can be used for good or for evil to mislead or to lead someone in the right direction. Like a parent's gaze can instruct a child, but a prostitute's gaze can derail your whole life and reduce you to a loaf of bread, King Solomon wrote. The one who sleeps or fondles with a prostitute, the one who touches another man's wife. God is serious about sex and it starts with the eyes. And I, I just felt compelled to share this message for the sake of freedom. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. So therefore, stand firm in that freedom. Do not be yoked again to the slavery of sin, Paul wrote to the church of Galatia. And it's easy in our world where there's so much pulling for our attention to lose focus on what's really captivating our eyes and to get off path and to let something that, that's going to destroy me captivate me. So it's so important to take a step back what is captivating my gaze and filling my heart and ruling my life? These are principles, revelations of freedom. And my heart for you, friend, is for you to be set free. So whether you, your eyes are filled with truth, beauty, light, and goodness, fixated on Jesus and his eternal beauty, or they're fixated on lust and on, on envy and greed, I want to encourage you with my whole heart, turn to him today, repent, change the focus of your eyes and your heart and your whole life will transform. And he empowers this freedom as we turn to him. God could not be more clear. He says, submit therefore to God through, the, through James, submit therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. It starts with your eyes, flows into your heart, flows out of your life. You want to change what's flowing through your life? You've got to start with what's filling your eyes. So I love you, friends, and freedom, freedom, freedom. It is the truth that sets you free. May you abide, guard, and walk in that freedom.